Welcome to City Cinema Tech, where the art and pleasure of the movies are the subject of serious discussion. I'm your host, Jerry Carlson, and I teach film studies at the City College of the City University of New York. Today, it's our pleasure to present I Am Cuba, directed by Mikhail Kalatozov. This film from 1964 was a Soviet and Cuban co-production. Neither country liked it after it was finished, and it really stayed on the shelf for many, many years. But then, several years ago, it was rediscovered and is now recognized as one of the masterpieces of political cinema of the 20th century, ranking with Battleship Potemkin and Triumph of the Will. This is a film of an amazing visual texture. I think you'll be actually awestruck by some of the things that you see. And today, afterwards, it's our pleasure to have as our guest Yevgeny Yevtushenko, the distinguished Russian writer, poet, and filmmaker who was also the co-writer of this film. Now, take this opportunity to luxuriate in the visual textures of I Am Cuba. Welcome back to City Cinema Tech. I hope you've enjoyed this rare opportunity to see I Am Cuba, an extraordinary film on the shelf for many years, but now uh, available and open to discussion about its extraordinary qualities, visual and narrative. Uh, it's a real pleasure to welcome to City Cinema Tech uh, the distinguished Russian poet, writer, essayist, performer, filmmaker, uh, Yevgeny Yevtushenko, who is also a distinguished uh, professor at Queens College of the City University of New York. Welcome to City Cinema Tech, Mr. Yevtushenko. Thank you. Let's, uh, you are the co-writer uh, of, this, of this film. Let's uh, talk about the origins of the film. Um, were you already in Cuba at that point? What were you doing when this film was? You know, uh, first of all, the Cuban Revolution was very important for my generation of uh, Russian uh, young intellectuals, Russian writers, poets, for everybody in Russia. Because we have very old, uh, big cheeses in Russian, Russian politics. They were not, uh, they were not able to improvise their speeches. They were always very boring, read their speeches. And so that's just very, it was like, a, uh, we were very fed up with uh, this ritual of their politics, of their congresses, and so on. And that moment appeared young, char irresistibly right. charming mm -hmm. men who overthrew, without uh, any foreign help, uh, dictator, Bat Batista, right. his re police uh, regime. A man who was walking on the streets of Havana almost without uh, bodyguards, and I've seen him in it, uh, talking with the people, uh, drinking with the people, and a man enough intellectual, I, I mean, it, and very young, right. promising, and a uh, wonderful figure for that time. It, so that was a, we, and many Russians of my generation, not only Russians, I think yeah, some Americans too. Absolutely. Well. For instance, people of uh, Evergreen Review, when I was publishing my poetry at that right. time, they were in love with him. And I think you, you, Amer you Americans made it big mistakes with uh, Fidel Castro, because after he won um, this revolution, uh, oh, it was Velvet Revolution almost, uh, and so when he came, and he came to the United States immediately, uh, instead uh, to show him uh, welcomed uh, face, you showed me some other less pleasant parts of your body. Right, indeed. So, and because uh, you you asked infor information probably from your CIA or from uh, uh, some Cuban uh, immigrants who immediately Batista supported your former. Uh, friends right and so it was wrong information so he was a how say caliph for one hour right. uh, so but it was not true and so we made a mistake and afterwards uh, we began to organize this invasion uh, to Cuba through the Bay of Pigs and I that time I came to Cuba and I was ne I never been member of Communist Party um, 
I could say I was uh, I do, did belong to the generation who were dreaming about socialism with un, human face before Dubček, before right, and that's why uh, leaders of Czech Revolution they were permanent visitors of all my readings in Moscow, of poets of our generation, right, the, and uh, so. And this is, Fidel was also one of incarnations of this dream of free socialism, socialism with, a, with no censorship, socialism uh, with, which gives freedom of all, to the all styles of, in paintings and literature right. and so on. And that time, you are, uh, 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 young Kennedy inherited uh, idea of invasion from Eisenhower's administration, and in happily, happily, he in last moment he cancelled aviation support. Right. Happily, that's why it was uh, almost bloodless and so on. But afterwards, absolutely unexpectedly, for Russians, because Russians, it's very interesting that Russians, Fidel was taking money from everybody. <laughs> from everybody, from some Americans. Nice. And one Russian, uh, I could say, freelance James Bond, <laughs> Russian, uh, Alexeyev, he was uh, in Mexico uh, under the cover of a journalist. And he liked Fidel very much. And he uh, wrote his coded uh, information that uh, Moscow has to support Fidel, to give some money. Right. And Moscow behaved as Americans. You asked him for information from CIA and Cuban uh, immigrants, <laughs> and he, Moscow leaders asked information of Cuban Communist Party. Cuban Communist Party gave very negative resume about <laughs> Fidel Castro. Well, Fidel was not absolutely communist at the yeah. beginning, absolutely. His brother was a little bit connected with some uh, young communist league, but in a way. So and you made the wrong decision, and you turned, you uh, you you began to push Fidel on the different road. Right. He gave first step Fidel did as a leader of God. He gave hand to America, and America didn't accept his right. hand. So it was, and I came there, and I really have seen beautiful beginning of Cuban Revolution. Mm -hmm. I was I, I never seen you know I was so happy, childishly happy, and I was writing my poetry, which was not. A little bit superficial because joy sometimes doesn't help us to analyze <laughs> events, you know. Uh, yes, in this moment, and I was publishing, I was a correspondent of Pravda, not being a member of Communist Part Party. It's never happened before. And I was, I was a poetical correspondent, sending my uh, very romantic poetry <laughs> through the Western <laughs> Union, so destroying the Pravda economically. Right. So, and um, even uh, that's one of our leaders, uh, Khrushchev, he made a joke that uh, n nobody, even worst enemies of socialism, didn't make such a economical damage for communism like if Tushenko's poetry sent through Western Union to Pravda. <laughs> so, in this moment, I was invited. Uh, my poetry was very well received. Uh, because Russians, uh, they liked Fidel too. Many right. Russians, they were calling with the name Fidel their children mm -hmm. that time. And so uh, Kalatozov, a great film director, Indeed. Uh, he made a, a film which was a very popular in Cuba, Quando Valen Rosiguinius, and when uh, cranes are flying. The, the cranes are flying, cranes it's called are, in, in are, English. Yes, cranes are flying. A film, by the way, available yes. here and known in the United yes. States. And you, it was the first film which broke iron curtain between our countries. Mm -hmm. Novel Dr. Zhivago mm -hmm. and film Cranes Are Flying, they, 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 they created this breakthrough. Right. Uh, again, uh, uh, go already getting rusty iron curtain. Right. In this moment, Gagarin came in Cuba. It was one also a splash of enthusiasm. Right. And I went in Cuba. But that was moment uh, after the invasion, and so they invited me to write this script. How that's right. where in this moment I was attacked by some hardliners, 
because of Bobby Yar, my poem right. against anti-Semitism, and another poem, Heirs of Stalin, which very p interesting that I wrote in Cuba, being correspondent proud. So, and in this moment, uh, but it was not easy for them, for Kalatozov and Rusevsky, to get permission to right. support, to suggest me as a script writer for right. first Cuban, uh, Cuban Russian collaboration in right. arts. But they did it, they were very stubborn. Um, and so I was working here, I came second time to Cuba and I learned already Spanish. But when they, when they came here, it was different times already. Okay. Di this bit different era. Fidel made some mistakes. And I was a witness that Khrushchev asked him with a special coded telegram not to close private market in Cuba. Very interesting. Uh, Khrushchev, Khrushchev asked, asked him, him and made some people from the Western press. I've read this because Mikoyan, when Mikoyan came in Cuba, in my presence, they decoded Khrushchev's cable, personal cable letter to Fidel wow. Castro. And I was witness how it was read. And um, afterwards it happened. So it's another it's revolution. Caribbean. The, afterwards it was missiles and so on and turmoil. And when Kalatozov and Rusevsky came to Cuba, I wanted to show them beautiful vegetable market, fruit vegetable market in Cuba. Mm -hmm. Many floors, you know, that's beautiful. Like it looks like a Huynheim Museum, something right. like that. Um, and we came there first morning of Rusevsky and Kalatozo. They were very nervous, very inspired, very happy being in Cuba. And it was just whistled wind, was empty all mm -hmm. rows, and only Bulgarian vinegar, some Russian tin cans, and lining up for something Cuban women. Right. F uh, gardens full were covered, fields were covered with the rotten fruits mm -hmm. because they stopped uh, commercial, private. Agriculture. Uh, yeah. As they didn't organize states buys of products, you know, that right, was right. very spontaneously. Right. And so in, in Kalatozov and Rusevsky heard they were crying. Right. They were crying because some Cuban women were Russians go home. The same in state Yankee go home. Because they thought that this market is closed because of Russian pressure. Right. Where in fact, you had been present for Khrushchev saying, don't do this, it would be a mistake to do yeah. this. Yeah. yeah. Well, let me just stop you just for one second for those who did not read the uh, titles of the film carefully, just to point out that when you speak of Kalatozov and Urusevsky, it was Sergei Urusevsky who was the partner of Mikhail Kalatozov and who was his director of photography. And it's their collaboration that is responsible for this magnificent visual texture of the film and for their anterior work, like the cranes are flying, that is so distinguished uh, visually. Well, now did you work, uh, what was the arrangements in terms of the work with the Cubans? You were working with, I know, the Cuban novelist and filmmaker later, Enrique Pineda Barnett. Uh, so you were doing research while you were in yes, Cuba? Yes, first of all, uh, we, we were working uh, with incredible conditions, the dream for all movie makers, you know. We got uh, free, free, between three, but we working free, f three or four months for to find material for the script, wow. just to find, you know, yeah. it's a dream, you know. Yeah. And we were, I, I repeated way of Fidel Castro and Sierra Maestra together with Enrique, with Rexax, not Kalatozov, it was too much for right. him. And uh, he, at the same time, he was sitting in Havana, checking old uh, documentary films of Batista. I've seen them too when I came back by nights. And uh, Pineda Barnett and me, we decided, uh, mm, we decided to write separate versions and to try to combine. Okay. Uh, 
So that's how we were uh, working. And I don't think what, uh, it doesn't matter, you know, in such a collaboration, what belongs to whom, it doesn't right. matter, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And was it always to be this uh, film of multiple episodes, which, you know, we, we know there are many anthology films, but one thinks here not of the visual texture, but of the sense of episodes of something like Rossellini's Open City, where you beautiful get the... Beautiful film. Roma Città Aperta. Absolutely. And in which you get these different views of uh, the society at the time from different... Was that your kind of model, or how did you... Yes, I could tell you what all our generation of writers, we are, uh, were influenced, even not only in the cinema, but in our literature, in our poetry, by Italian neorealism. Because in Italy, uh, during fascism, a totalitarian regime. It was very pompous, so-called uh, uh, films of uh, cinema of white telephone. Right, exactly. So other things, you know, pompous uh, opera uh, like uh, made films which didn't, uh, were not connected with the reality, absolutely. And when we see Rom Chita, Roma Chita Perta, Bicycle Thieves, another wonderful film, unfortunately forgotten, you couldn't find it in the United States on the cassette. Yeah, even in Italy, you couldn't right. find it. Rome, Ale, Roma alle undici, Rome at 11 o'clock. Right. It's a great film by DeSantis, other films. You know, for us, we, it was a great discovery. We, it's, again, it's again pushed us back to the road of realism, mm. to the reality, from the fake reality of the totalitarian regime. And when I met, um, uh, later, I met Cesare Zavattini, right. and I told him, but we, we all are children of your uh, bicycle thief, which is still my most beloved film in the world. And I, uh, he said, but we uh, were children of Russian realism of the end of the 19th century. Right. And so, so our, in a way, Chekhov, through Italian neorealism, also they came back to us. Right. And that was a great. And that's why we wanted to make something. That's why we decided to avoid a contemporary story, what is going now, because it's very deep. But clear, there is, was real truth. It was a regime of Batista was unbearable and rebellion against this regime was fair. Exactly. And that's, that was real true history. We didn't want to, to touch current politics because uh, we, we were right. right. That's why this film you uh, see mm, and you understand, you could feel that film made with sincere hands. Absolutely. But there are some naive views, okay. of course. A naive use. In my opinion, generally, Urusevsky, first of all, was dictator. Is that he right? Was, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay, he was tell me about that. Many geniuses are dictators. Uh, and because and a genius of cinematography he was, yes. Yeah, yeah. And so he just told me, his condition was, no words. <laughs> Cinema, it's a visual art. So main, the, the dialogue is that, that a minimum, <laughs> just minimum, minimum. Oh, he wants that. In the beginning, he didn't want even one word. Right. So it's one of my weapons, words. <laughs> I understood him partly, but I think when... Uh, so he exaggerate, exaggerated in his imagination the importance of cinema only like a visual art. Right. He was a painter, good painter, above all. Himself. And he, he himself became the film director. He made some not good, some not bad films, but they were... Like a two, you, you know, you couldn't use even for salad concentrated vinegar. You understand? Right, I understand. So it was so beautiful. But sometimes his films, which he did, was so beautiful. But sometimes each shot was so beautiful, but too concentrated. It was impossible to use to right. consume it. Absolutely. The eyes were tired, you know, and that's why I it uh, belongs to kind of art uh, so. So beautiful, beautiful, you want a piece of um, 
Yes, I, yes, uh, I don't want to say to the prison wall. Okay, yeah, murder. The okay. murder. Okay. The prison yes, of the murder. murder. You know? Doggy do is what we sometimes <laughs> Doggy do. do. Okay, <laughs> doggy do. You understand? I understand so, very well. <laughs> but we were discussing him. He was a man alive and so. And I, it was torture for me to write with no words, no. And, uh, but I understood his view. But sometimes I would become desperate because you know that I, I was a very skillful guy because living on the 17th floor of Havana um, Libre, former Havana Hilton. Uh, uh, so I was, t I taped uh, about uh, four on the slow uh, speed, right. f about four hours on my, my uh, tape, recording tape, my writing, okay. uh, ta tape writer. Tape writer, and I was going to beautiful Havana night clubs. Right, right. Uh, sipping uh, not less beautiful cocktails, and so <laughs> pretending what I'm working. Yeah. Was, uh, so that Enrique was working, and we were meeting, but a little bit step by step, and I could tell you generally about results. I think that as a, in this film, probably weakest part is a script. Probably. Okay. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. But it because I worked only uh, for Rusevsky sometimes. Yeah. Kalatoza was unfortunately sometimes he was a softer than Rusevsky. Okay. Rusevsky was dictating even him. And the most beautiful part of this film that it's a cinema cinematography itself. Absolutely. Uh, script, very sincere, believe me. We don't think about any political profit, how it will look in the eyes of Fidel himself or eyes of our government. We are not thinking about it. We're doing it very, film is very sincere, but naive. Yeah. For instance, uh, the piece about American sailors, uh, but we, we, you know, we, we couldn't get American actors. One French actor, uh, play, having a role uh, American, you know, that's, uh, that's fine. It's, uh, it's unnatural. Yeah. Uh, we, we invited probably for uh, ec as extras for American Marines, mm, Estonian or Latvian. Right. So it was a kind of fake, you know, a little bit. Right. Uh, because it was a, Cuba was a, right. isolated at that time. Right. And so there are some naive parts, but Cinematography is absolutely unbelievable, beautiful, and I think this film, when Francis Coppola, uh, for uh, Coppola and uh, Ma uh, Martin Scorsese, they discovered this film right. in dusty archives, they made a great deal for future movie ma American movie makers. Right. For instance, one, two pieces. For instance, it's a, when camera uh, goes down. Right. From the highest Top of the floor, hotel, yeah. of, of, yes, to the uh, swimming pool, or other demonstrations, for instance, funerals, right. absolutely unbelievable. It's absolutely new language of cinema. Absolutely. And many uh, young Americans, movie makers, who are now, they are, they are already, even some of them are already the present of American cinema, not only future. They learned a lot from, a lot. Absolutely. So, and, and I'm, but I'm happy that I participated. It was a great experience. And I uh, admire uh, generally Cuban character, Cuban painting, uh, I, Cuban people, dances, and I, and I hope that uh, in near future, uh, America finally will improve relationship and will understand will understand what you made at the very beginning of Cuban Revolution. You made mistakes right. in relationship with the Cuba. Well, let's talk about what happened to this film in its first stage after it was finished, because the film was not, was not liked and, and disappeared. Well, who disliked it, and what did they say about it? Or did they say I anything? Could, I, because I told you what already happened, right. because you know, honeymoon of Russian people with the uh, Cubans, it was over very quickly. Right. 
Some Cubans began to accuse the Russians in all uh, economical mistakes. Uh, it's a, you know, I'm not uh, just men who just trying to defend Russians. Of course, I, I'm sure that uh, uh, it's a pity what uh, we had missiles and um, war, and I've been that time, right. and I know how world was a close to the to nuclear war. Right, exactly. Uh, well, yeah, I felt it. But you know who was on my lap laptop when American when American uh, uh, planes they were like this, like like uh, shaving, almost mm -hmm. shaving our <laughs> hair on our heads. Were flying over swimming pool. I was sitting at the swimming pool on my laptop. Was a boy about uh, probably 12, uh, year, 12, 10 years boy. It was a f future prime minister of Russia in Yeltsin's government, Gaidar, <laughs> and he made a pee on my laptop <laughs> at this moment. So I very, I remember very well. It's a, it's a very concrete memory <laughs> of that. Yes. And I and I remember very well. That was a, a big, di big difficulty with the food, and I got uh, for uh, New Year just one little piece of garlic from uh, task correspondent of right? Russia for New Year. That's I remember. Right. And so, and the Cubans, they were marching on the streets. They were insulted. They feel insulted by both sides. Right. And Fidel, and I understood Fidel, because we were, uh, we were talking with Americans overhead of Fidel. But it was, a, you know, uh, it was not on purpose to insult him or humiliate him. But it happened because it was a very difficult situation, you know. Right. We, we needed a quick decision, final decision. I remember beautifully one day, when our representative of the United Nations, he was declared that we have no missiles in Cuba, and it was published in the same newspaper, Izvestia, yeah. and on the other page of the same number, the same day was published that we will take our missiles from Cuba if you take your uh, <laughs> closer American base in Turkey. It was in the same number. So I, I've seen all these chaos. Happily, happily, I, I could say that this is what happened in the uh, Cuban Missile Crisis, that we show it, our leaders, Khrushchev that time and John Kennedy, different generation people, they gave us an example that even in some critical moments of the mortal danger for all the rest of humanity, Despite of all ideological difference, our leaders could find common language and common sense could win. So, I'm going to have to, I'm, I hate to do this to you, but this is a great place to end. And we have run out of time, but I can think of no better place to do so than cautioning people about the common sense that world leaders may have. If you'd like to know more about City Cinema Tech, please uh, get in contact with us. You can do so by visiting our website, www.cuny.tv. Again, that's www.cuny.tv. Mr. Yevchyshenko, I cannot thank you enough for your presence here, your memories, your insight, your analysis, and uh, simply your voice, a voice very well known in the world of literature of the 20, 20th and 21st century. And please, I hope you'll join us again as on Cinema, City Cinema Tech, we do our best to find the best of world cinema in the extraordinary archives available to us. Thank you so much for joining us today.